Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about sensory neural hearing loss. Coming right up. Okay, there are so many different types of hearing losses that we've actually identified and we've kind of made more, I'm gonna say this in a nice way, and I'm not trying to be a bad thing, okay? More junk terms and overall terminology. Let me give you an example of a junk term. And it's an overall term, so it's not trying to say it's a bad term, but tinnitus or tinnitus it is an overall term for different types of sounds that are made in the ear without an outside sound. Okay, so your ear is making a sound and it's a type of symptom of a problem. Okay, so people could have buzzing sounds and clicking sounds and beeping sounds and you know waving kind of sounds and all kinds of different things, but we use the overall junk term of tinnitus or tinnitus. Now, sensory neural hearing loss, we'll speak it down here on the bottom of the screen, is the same kind of thing because there are different types of sensory neural hearing loss. Now, we have different types of hearing losses like uh, sensory neural hearing losses when we get older, okay? that because we don't actually know exactly all the things. A patient might walk into my office, and I've been doing this for 32 years, and they come in and they're 82 years old. I'm guessing some of the things that happen, they can't give me all of the information that could have happened throughout their life. And no matter what you do, I don't care what test you're gonna run, you're never gonna know everything about that. And so that's really, a, I mean, and I don't wanna give you all the technical terms, it's not relevant here. But hearing loss that is on the older age. We have hearing loss that is sudden sensory neural hearing loss. Now sudden sensory neural hearing loss normally happens in one ear and, it, and you completely go deaf. And I mean, it just shuts off. Now there's different types of ways that happens and the reasons for that. Now those are the kind of things, if you ever have a sudden sensory neural hearing loss, and I mean a massive hearing loss one ear and it's, you don't hear anything out of it, lay in a pillow and you can't hear anything, go and call the physician next moment, okay? Because if you go and see an ear, nose and throat physician, neurologist, either one, you can actually recover it maybe. Okay, but if you don't catch it in the first couple of weeks, it's a big, it's a big issue. Okay, so definitely call the neurologist and ear, nose, and throat physician. And even if they have appointment times, they say, well, you know, I got appointment times three months from now. No, 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 no. This is an emergency, and they normally can pop you in kind of quicker in that way. So that's something to kind of look for. But there are all kinds of different hearing losses, including uh, sensory neural hearing loss and <coughs> noise related, <coughs> and all kinds of things, <coughs> pardon me. And with the sensory neural hearing loss, normally it cannot be recovered by medical means. Now again, sudden sensory neural hearing loss, there are a few types of hearing losses that we can recover it, but for the most part, when you have nerve deafness, it is sensory neural hearing loss. And nerve deafness kind of gives you this mess, messed up viewpoint. See, some people think nerve deafness means the brain is dead or the ear is dead. And, and they're misunderstanding that. Physicians sometimes accidentally tell you that because they're just trying to come up with a good analogy. And sometimes it's not a perfect analogy, okay? And as audiologists, we spend a lot of time really honing in our analogies. And sometimes we have to give different ways because people are not, you know, kind of understanding what we're talking about there. So that's something that we look at. But sensory neural hearing loss can be addressed by proper amplification. Now I have a, I'm a person that has a mild to moderate sensory neural hearing loss or nerve damage. And I definitely get help when I wear hearing aids, okay? And most of our patients have that. When we have a medical difficulty in that, in that hearing loss, then we know about that. It's called a conductive hearing loss. So a person with a conductive hearing loss, we're gonna send off to an ear physician definitely to, get, to have that addressed, okay? Because there are types of, of medical conditions that can be fully or partially improved. Now, it obviously depends on your ability to have surgery. I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, I'll tell you the, a brief one. 
So I had a person that had a conductive hearing loss about 15, 20 years ago. And, you know, he's 35 years old, comes in with a wife. You know, I mean, there's no surgery compl complications I can come up with. And he's got a pure medical condition hearing loss. And I'm like, if you'll go have surgery, I mean, everything will be back to normal. I mean, I, I, you know, I was guaranteed, you know, that kind of way. And I was like, hey, man, you, you don't need hearing aids. The wife jumps in and says, no. Okay. And she goes, four or five months ago, we were in the hospital. He had, a, uh, he had an issue after surgery and, you know, um, he was in a coma for a month. We're absolutely not doing that. No matter what anyone says, not happening, we're going to do hearing aids. Now, she's made a medical choice for their family so that they can get some help with their hearing. So that, those are some of the other things that kind of come up. But sensory neural hearing loss is, a, <coughs> excuse me, is a really powerful hearing loss. But again, it's an overall terminology. Don't think that that is the actual final diagnosis. Because what we also have to have is the level of that. Now, don't think about percentages. Everyone wants to talk about percentages. And I'll probably do a video on that one too later on, but don't talk about percentages. The only people that ever use percentages, so I'm gonna give you two groups of people, the VA and uh, workman's comp kind of things. Now, what are they trying to do? And they're, they're trying to quantify, and I, and I have a lot of troubles with the way that they do that. It's just a reality that we have to do, deal with as audiologists. And so we have calculators that we have to do. And I can't just look at one. I have to do an Algebra 1 calculation to find out what, what the percentage is. And it's not going to help you in any other case but workman's comp or VA. So don't think about that. We do have quantifications. But the reality is we're going to show you about your sensory neural hearing loss when you come in to see us. Because we have three audiologists and we're going to add more as we go along over the years. And we know about hearing loss and we can address, we can address that. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. You can leave some questions down below.